everyone and welcome back to Behind the Design. In this week's episode we're going to be looking at some of the reception rooms in the London Townhouse project. We'll be looking at the living room, the study and the playroom and with each of these rooms I'm going to share some of my design tips with you. At the heart of this project, it's a family home, and so we needed to create a space that had places for every single member of this family to relax. And with the reception room, it's really all about the adults. The client said to me she didn't want to worry about practicality, she just wanted all out glamour and elegance. A living room is what we would call a principal room, so whenever we're establishing a brief for the client, we always work out what room is most important to them, and then we'll allocate the budget accordingly. And I would say this room was probably one of the most important rooms to this client, and you'll really see that reflected in the furnishings, the fabrics, the chandeliers, the joinery. We really didn't hold back, and it just feels like such a special room. At the heart of a living room, it's all about sitting and entertaining and being comfortable. So my top tip is really all about sofas. In terms of the size of a sofa, don't make the mistake of going for something that's got really wide arms because that's going to really reduce the amount of seating that you have. Go for something that has narrow arms and that can look very elegant. And then in terms of the depth of the sofa, go for a sofa between 90 to 100 centimetres. That's going to let you dress it with some beautiful scatter cushions and you'll still have room to relax on the sofa and you won't be just perched on the end. My second tip is about coffee tables. We always use a coffee table in our living room. It's a great focal point of the room and a beautiful opportunity to do some nice styling. Contrary to popular opinion, actually if you go bigger on the coffee table, it will make your living room feel bigger. But you want to aim to have around 50 to 60 centimeters circulation space around that so it doesn't feel too cramped. And I would say if you're going for an ottoman, you can reduce that circulation space down slightly because most people like those to double up as a footstool, so you could probably go down to about 40 centimetres. In terms of styling, I would say try and layer up different objects, so have some coffee table books, and then it's quite nice if you contain your accessories on top of the books, it feels like a lot more organised. And then we'll combine that with maybe a candle, some faux flowers, and maybe a nice sculpture. My final tip for living rooms is all about TVs. They're an absolute minefield and we're always trying to hide them. How we do that is we either put them in some joinery and then cover them with some sliding doors that can close off the TV when you're not watching it. Or if your budget doesn't stretch to that, you can put them on top of a piece of furniture, like a sideboard, but make sure you leave enough space to also have some accessories to dress the sideboard so it's not all about the TV. And then on the wall itself, you can put some art which will really detract from the TV and make it less domineering. The study in this project was a bit of an afterthought. We had this awkward space at the top of the stairs and we really didn't know what to do with it. And then as the project evolved, we decided alongside the client to turn it into a study, which is the perfect place for working from home. My first piece of advice when designing studies is think about the location of your desk. In this study, it's a really small room, so we decided to put it under the window, and that had the benefit that you get a lovely view when you're sitting there and working, but also it frees up all the wall space so you can add a lot more joinery and a lot more storage. My second tip for your desk is really think about cable management. If there's one thing I hate more than anything else in interior, it's seeing cables and plugs. So if you can go bespoke, make sure you have a grommet in the top of your desk that all your cables will feed into and then have some cable management down the leg. And then if you can't go down a bespoke route, maybe think about getting a desk with a solid back and then you can hide all the cables behind the back of the desk and it will look so much neater. My last tip for studies is thinking about the type of storage you want. You want to have some hidden storage where you can hide all your ugly things like printers and files, and then some open storage where you can display beautiful objects like photo frames and nice books. And by having that combination, you're gonna have something nice to look at, it's gonna be practical. And especially in a small room like this, by having open shelving, it makes the room feel a little bit bigger. Being a mum, I know how important a playroom is. If you get the playroom right, the rest of your interior gets to be nice and tidy. So with this house, we really want to make sure that we gave them loads of storage to keep all the toys contained within this one room. We knew that we wanted to have a big TV and we wanted to have a big sofa and also keep some surface area free for toys. 
My first tip is all about storage. I feel like all I do is talk about storage, but the playroom needs so much storage. And in a small room like this, there really is no substitute for built-in joinery. You're gonna maximize every single inch of space. In this room, we combined some open shelving, but we also did a lot of closed storage. And you'll notice that's all on a push-catch release, so there's no sharp handles for the kids to hurt themselves on. My second tip is about the wall coverings. It goes without saying all the finishes need to be really hard wearing and wiped clean in a playroom. Disasters will happen. So in here we've used a vinyl wall covering and that's the best thing for having a white clean surface that will look good for years to come. For the styling in this room, we didn't want to go excessive with the budget, so we've kept the artwork really affordable. The large painting above the sofa is actually a print that's been printed on canvas and it looks really effective. And then we've doubled that up with some decorative baskets to hang on the wall. And I find everyday objects, if you hang them nicely, can look really effective in this kind of room. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more behind the scenes, more tips and tricks, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.